Okay, good morning. Welcome to KXC. Can I get a little hey -o? <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Hello if you're joining us online. Um, keep coming in, guys, if you're not yet in the room. We are here to worship Jesus. This is church. If you've never come here before, if you're new to church, you are so, so welcome. Just feel free to watch what happens. We're going to, in a minute, start with our worship, which is our singing, and the kids and young people are going to join us. I would love to invite any kids that want to come down here. We've got River and Joel. River and Joel are going to lead us in some actions to help us in our worship this morning. And any kids or young at heart that want to come down, there's a great space down here. We're going to get ready to boogie, shake ourselves up, because God is really good and He is worth celebrating. And we are alive this morning. Woo! Woohoo! I want to tell, before we all stand to our feet, there are some two very special things happening this morning. The first one is Teddy Ellis Martin, baby Teddy, is going to be dedicated. So that's something to look forward to in a moment. And the second thing is we have the wonderful Lauren Windle here with us to share with us. So exciting times. Why don't we stand to our feet? And I am going to pray. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you, Father, that you see and know everyone in this room, whether you're a kid or a grown-up. He knows your story. And we open ourselves up to you and your spirit today. And we ask that you would lead us, Holy Spirit, as we worship you. Let's celebrate. All right. What song is it, Joel? Or I'm... We are the free, so we are set free by Jesus, so let's sing it loud. And it's River, River's coming up. I'm going to step aside. All right, what do we do?
see And you are the one who set us all in motion Yours is the glory We are the free, the free generation Sing in a mercy You are the one who set us all in motion Yours is the glory There's a fire in our hearts and it burns for you It's never gonna fade are going to invite the kids to stay. So if you're new to KXC and you've got a child or a young person, if, or if you're a carer, we're going to head out those doors with the kids team. But I'm just going to pray for you before you go. Lord, thank you for our kids. We pray that you would fill them with joy today as they learn about you, that each one would encounter your love today. Father, we pray in your name. Amen. Oh, Amen. All right. Okay, so if you're standing at the door trying to get in, perhaps if you could just stand back while we let our kids and young people, parents and carers, go out, then we'll have another wave of people coming in. There are still some seats, particularly up the front here. There's some seats on the benches at the back, so there is room for you. Um, while this chaos is happening, keep it moving, guys. I'll ask the host team to just help everyone. Move on out and move on in. Why don't we stand to our feet, the rest of us, as we continue in worship this morning. So again, if you've been a Christian for years or if this is your first time in church for a long time or um, first time ever or anywhere in between, you're so welcome. And I just want to declare over every person here that you have a Father in heaven who sees you and loves you no matter where you are on the journey, no matter how you come today, you are loved and known and chosen. And um, it says in the Bible, see what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. When we say yes to to Jesus, we just get to become His child, no matter what, no conditions. And we thank you for that grace and that love. So why don't we sing together? We're going to have a time of singing together. So let's stand to our feet. And again, if this is new to you, feel free to just watch. But I would say, why don't you just say, God, if you're real, would you show yourself to me if you're here? Lord, we invite your presence. Thank you that you're here by your spirit. Help us to worship you this morning. Amen. Let's go.
for the cross of Jesus Christ. And I believe in Christ crucified. Yes, I believe he was raised back to life. And I We 
join with the angels My soul sings, my soul sings, my soul sings, how I love you, my soul sings, my soul sings. going on it's okay God is spirit and he comes and meets us meets with his people by his spirit when we gather in his name you're safe it's okay we're just saying yes God he is good his intentions are good I feel like 
like there is like a sound that's been waiting to arise. Maybe it's a yearning and a longing, whether you know Him or not, we've got a yearning for the living God, for His presence, and it's only going to be His presence. We want the real thing. We're like, Jesus, we want the real Jesus to reveal, be revealed to us today. And He is here by His Spirit to meet our hunger. So I just feel like if you want to sing out, but even just like yell out or just like groan or just sigh or do whatever you need to do, He's not interested in pretenses. He wants the real you. If you don't feel enough, you're in the right place. If you're hurting, you're in the right place. If you're heavy, you're in the right place. Bring it to Him. Let's just bring it to Him in honesty now. Lord, would You come? Meet Your people. We're hungry. We are hungry. We are hungry for You. We need You. We need You. We need You. We need You. you unlock us, God, when we, where we need unlocking? Would You unlock us to engage every part of us with every part of You? You are pursuing Your people. There are those in the room that might feel like, I don't know why I'm here, I don't belong. God says, You belong. You're not here by chance, You belong. Even if you're finding it hard to maintain attention, He's talking to you. You belong here. He's going to speak to you this morning. It just says, stay open. You don't have to be anyone else but yourself. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We're going to move in into a time of prophecy. So that is a gift of the Spirit that we were talking about last week as a church. It, we believe it is a gift for today, for the strengthening, comforting, encouragement, for the building up of the church. We believe that when we pray that God talks back to us, revealing His heart, His will for us, His truth about us. So we need that, right? We need to hear His voice afresh today. So we're just going to have a moment of quiet. And, and the Lord, when He speaks, it often sounds like your thoughts. It might be just a verse of Scripture. It might be a picture. It might be an impression. And we're just going to invite those who call KXC home, who we know you're committed to here, our church family, just so we can be accountable with this. We're all learning and growing. Not everything's going to be from God like we're learning and growing, but the guidelines are their words that of comfort, strengthening and encouragement, okay? Any other words, if you've got a word of correction or rebuke, that's fine. God does sometimes do that, but just come and speak to one of the leaders that you've seen up the front at the end of the service and we'll weigh what to do with that word, okay? All right, so let's just focus on the Lord again. Thank you, Lord, that you're speaking to your people, that you are always speaking. Would you now reveal your heart? Reveal your heart, Father. Lord, would you awaken the gift of prophecy in this room now for the comfort, for the strengthening, for the encouragement, for the building up of your church? Amen. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to invite you forward. Um, again, this might be new for those in the room, and that's fine. Don't get freaked out. Let's just go with it. These might be words for individuals in the room of what we feel the Lord wants to do and say. It might be for us as a church. It might be for London, for this area. Um, and so let, we'll keep it short. I'm going to hold on to the microphone. Don't be offended by that. Um, I'd also love to invite very short testimony. We don't, I preached on testimony the other month and I'm still feeling fired up about it. We want to hear back. We had a time of prophecy last week and we want to hear back even from the home group, from our hubs where you've been practicing the prophetic. What's been landing? What's God been saying and doing in our midst? Yeah, feel free to sit down. It's all right. Um, so yeah, Iona, hot off the mark. I love it. I love it. Here she goes. 
Iona. Um, yeah, I just had a sense that um, maybe someone is running from God, uh, and I felt like it was to do with shame. And I had that verse from Psalm 139 where it says, even when I go to the far side of the sea or the depths of the ocean, like even there your hand will find me. Um, so I just felt like if that's you and you feel like you're you're running from God, that um, you belong to him. And just as Kath was saying, you know, you belong, like there's a place for you and you're not, um, you're not an orphan. Um, God has a home for you. And I also had the name Brendan. So I don't know if that's linked. That is for someone called Brendan or linked to someone. Um, but I think it's also a wider word. Maybe there's a few people. Mm. It's good. Thank you. Yes, Neil. Um, actually, yeah, on the back of that, I had a picture of a um, bit like a Pandora's box, and I feel like there's someone here where the Lord is almost like calling you, like, come on, I want to, you know, I want to know you, but you're almost like, there's like fear that, oh, if I do that, it's going to open a Pandora's box, and like all these crazy things are going to happen, but I feel like there was such freedom was going to come. I also had felt like a real sort of tingling on my lips, and I feel like there's someone here maybe who's got a prophetic gift, and maybe you're having, you've got tingling lips, and I feel like um, maybe you've got a word for someone here or the church, um, so just encourage you on that. I love that. So that word is for right now in this moment. If you've got tingling lips, step of faith coming up. God often gives us more as we start to speak. Have you got one, Ames? Sneaking up behind you. I had Romans 8, verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And I felt like that was for someone here who's used to doing church and used to almost the culture of, of church and Christianity. And um, maybe you're coming to this realization that that does not always satisfy. And I, I even feel like today you might just feel discouraged by it and you might feel a bit flat and like, oh, here we go, like the pad, like the classic, the way we do church. Um, and I feel like there, God wants you just to groan or like, to, and we kind of did it in worship, but I just feel like you need a space just to be be yourself, not say all the words that you think are the right words or the right prayers, and let God intercede through you and let him pray and work through you. Um, so I hope we have time for that at the service at some point, or maybe just in this week. Just really want to encourage you. Romans 8, verse 26. Mm, it's really good. Thank you. Yeah, Darren. Oh, sorry. I've been, neg I've been neglecting that side, and there is glory on this side. I'm so sorry, Celine. It's okay. It's okay. Um, this is really encouraging um, because I also have Romans 8 up on my phone ready to, I was yeah. ready to drop the scripture. Yes. Um, and it's also, I feel it's for people, for someone that is disillusioned in church. I had the exact same thing. Um, but the verse I had was uh, verses 38 onwards, which is, I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Yeah. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Yeah. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from God, the love of God that is revealed through Christ Jesus our Lord. And I just felt that um, people need to receive God's love again because they feel um, separate because they've become very disillusioned with the motions of church and that God is, does not, is not weary of that and he is for you. So good. It's beautiful. I just feel like we need to let that settle. Because mm. I've, I've neglected this side. I'm going to go Dele. Then you... Were you? I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, I'm calling you up, Dele. Come on. Come on. Um, this is crazy because, like, I actually had another word for someone who is disillusioned with the church as well. Um... It was like a building, and the building transformed into a rocket. It's so weird. And then the rocket flew into space, and I was like, God, that makes no sense. And, um, <laughs> and what I felt God was saying, um, maybe to this particular person, maybe to a few people, is that you need the church in order, to, in order to shoot off, in order to go to places that you've never been before, in order to... Um, it's like a place of strengthening. And obviously, God is our strength, but the body of Christ, the building of Christ... Not the building, the people mm. are what push you yeah. to where you really need to go. And then the second part of that, yeah, this, this one's mad. <laughs> people, when people build rockets, right, I don't think people speak about the amount of times these rockets fail. 
in order to like lift off and how hard it is to actually lift off. And I wanted to speak to this person and say, actually, like, the church will hurt you. You will be hurt by the church. And I don't want you to, like, think that that's not going to happen. Like, relationships will fail. And I just wanted to speak, I guess, a protection over that and to not worry about that. And actually, to know that you will, re God will help you rebuild. God will help you start again. Um, but the church is still a safe place. Um, yeah. yeah. So good. Wow. I just, God is underlining something here, isn't he? Um, Darren, it is your turn. <laughs> I feel more pressure now. Um, I felt like there's a sort of, I've been feeling it for a few weeks actually, like a sort of sense of, a new sense of freedom. And um, I, I think like three years ago, we went into physically, globally, we went into a state of imprisonment. And I think, um, while that was a physical thing, I think it was a really spiritual thing, like it was a real spiritual imprisonment. And I feel like there's a kind of a moment of freedom for the kind of the spiritual imprisonment that I think still lingers. Like I think there has, obviously there's some people been, it's been really great, have found freedom earlier as lockdown lifted and whatever. But I think there's been a weird prolonging of spiritual imprisonment. And I th God was just saying to me that um, you might have been really questioning why I've still not, is using the sort of spiritual gifts that I feel like I've had or the kind of calling that I've had. And I feel like God's saying that there's been, like there's been a lingering of that imprisonment. And it, it's not your fault that that has kind of continued. It's like a kind of spiritual battle that has, for whatever reason, still been the case. But I feel like there's now a moment of freedom and release. And I saw like um, hands that have been bound, like hands that were used for healing or prayer or, or some other kind of ministry, I think, particularly being kind of um, freed. So. so good. Oh, man. Um, I think you're so John, thank you. I do need help. I can't always see what's going on. Sorry. It's exceptionally kind. Thank you. Um, sorry to call you out. Hebe, I, I felt for you, I kept seeing you in my mind in like a, um, in like a boxing ring. And um, you thought you were like sparring, like doing a bit of practice, but it became this fight and, it, and you, you were taking some hits and there was some real pain in that. Um, but I saw it become like a dance. You just started floating around the ring and what, what was a fight became a dance. And I just feel like something you're involved in right now, which feels like a slog, it's like you're getting hammered and hammered and hammered, is gonna quickly become like a testament to, to the beauty, the creativity of what God's put in you. Um, and, I, and I think it's to do, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's to do with church, and I think it's to do with like getting getting whacked, and um, but there's going to be such beauty in it. It's going to be amazing. So good, Lydia. Yeah. Um, so basically, during the worship, I had this strange sensation in the back of my head, um, like a tingling, like really strong. So I kept the Holy Spirit ask, uh, asking, "What is it?" Um, then I thought, is that where the dreams are? So I couldn't really, I don't know, I'm not a, you know, I don't know about the brain too much. But what I sense the Holy Spirit say is, um, it is someone's here, or maybe a couple of people, whose dreams have been completely crushed. And they're literally just wondering, what, what's next? Um, and I felt the Spirit say, tell them, uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper, to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So I just want to bless you with that, if that's you. Amen. Justin. Uh, this could just be me, but hopefully it's uh, biblical tr truth. Um, I was uh, just earlier briefly praying about uh, the prodigal son and just the story where the younger son wished his father to be dead, you know, spat in his face, give me what's coming to me now. And it's just this idea of no matter what you have done, uh, there's a place for you. There's forgiveness. Uh, you can come back to the father and the father runs to you. Uh, so no matter how, how bad you feel or whatever, if that is relevant to anyone, there's a place and the father runs to you and there's always forgiveness. Amen. Emily. And then we'll be last one, I think. Could go on all day. Love it. Yeah, so I had a sense actually off the prodigal son, but instead of um, this person running to the father, I actually had a picture of um, the father kneeling down with arms wide open saying, come to me. And this person, whoever this is for, 
kind of like a toddler, like having a tantrum, kicking and screaming, running around, being fickle. And it's sunset, and maybe this person feels like it's maybe too late to go to the Father, and the Father's just saying, no, I'm here. I'm waiting for you. Just come. Yeah. So good. Come on up. Um, in our morning prayer time, we were talking about being adopted, and I had this really um, heavy feeling in my feet, like there were roots growing down, and like God was calling, um, I think, us as a church to really be rooted in our identity in him as children of God, and then also this picture of like a stand of trees providing shelter for people who are feeling a bit lost or just in need of um, a safe place to go to, and how we are called to be those people to provide shelter. So good. So good. Oh, God is speaking. Hey, is Luke Stewart outside those doors? Could he just... <laughs> I'm just going to ask Luke. Luke had a word this morning. Luke, do you want to come and just share that word real quick? I think it might be right. <laughs> yeah, give a hand for Luke. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just had the sense that um, somebody or some people here might um, just be struggling a little bit with binge eating um, and something might have happened this week where, like, you bought... A packet of something and before you knew it you'd eaten the whole thing and it felt like re a really low moment and um I just felt like God maybe wanted to like set you free from the habit but also the shame uh, that comes with that and um yeah so I, if that's for anyone um yeah I'd love to pray for you so good thanks Luke sorry for dragging you in um wow okay let's just take a moment we're going to have a time, um, Lauren's going to speak to us in a minute, but we're going to have a time of prayer and prayer ministry opportunity to come forward for prayer. But I'm going to ask you to do something. When God speaks, it's because he wants to act. He doesn't just do it to show off. Um, and this is, there were a few vulnerable ones, but if there was anything that resonated with you in those words, even just a little bit, would you be brave and just put your hand in the air? All that's going to happen is people around you are just going to lay a hand on your shoulder um, and then later there'll be another opportunity to come and share. So we've got some hands in the air. Just look around. So pop your hand right up, and then those around, look around now. This is church family. Don't leave anyone hanging, even if there's someone here, a lady here at the back. So let's just look around. Just come and lay a hand. Ask if you can lay a hand on their shoulder. Um, again, we've got two people here. Don't leave them hanging. It's all right if you don't know them. Just ask if you can lay a hand on their shoulder. That's the way. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Jesus, thank you that you're speaking here this morning and you are speaking because you want to move, because you are going to heal, you are going to set free, you are going to launch your people, and bring growth and life and freedom and we say yes. We say yes. And Lord, where hearts are beating fast and where there is pain in the room, it's not too much for you. You see and you know, would you meet with your people and do what only you can do, Holy Spirit? We thank you for your activity in this room. We thank you for these dear people and even those that have not put their hands up but who know it's them. We, the Lord sees you. It's enough that you're in the room. We say yes to what you're going to do, Lord, this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I said, there will be more opportunity for prayer, guys. Oh, thanks. Just roaming around. Maybe I should roam with the mic more often. It's quite fun. Um, yeah, so do come forward. Even if there was something else that wasn't named, but you just come here knowing that you need prayer, healing, anything, um, make sure you come forward for that later. Um, I'm going to zoom through the notices real quick, but I didn't say at the start, my name is Kath. I'm part of the leadership team here at KXC. It is so good to have you. Thanks, Damalola. Love, love your work. Um, it's so good to have you here, um, especially if you're new, if you're visiting, if you've just decided to try church for the first time, you're so welcome. We know that we're a bit weird here in church, so you've probably already seen some weird things. It's okay. Stick with us. Hang around afterwards. Come and say hi. We would love to meet you, especially if you've got more questions. So come downstairs afterwards for a cuppa. Come up to the welcome desk. You can get some more information there. 
there, that how to get involved and who on earth are we, things like that. Um, the other, oh, I'm just going to do this. I always do this. I should have the Britney mic like you, Lauren. It just is the best, isn't it? Um, the second thing to say is come to our next newcomer's meal. If you've never been to one before, this is a chance to meet some of the leaders at KXC, meet other newcomers. It's free. It's going to be on the 19th of February. Sign-ups are online. Look for this image. Come along to that. Um, we would love to meet you. The other thing is join the Newcomers Hub. So hubs are our midweek community groups and we have a Newcomers Hub. If you've just landed at KXC, not yet joined a regular hub, we would love you to come to this one. You'll get to go on a bit of a journey. It's going to be fortnightly on a Monday. And you get to learn some of the, the vision and values that we have at KXC and just meet some other new peeps, which is always great. Um, again, sign up online for that. All right, Pull Me Through album, worship album, was released this week on Friday. Who knew about that? I did, yeah. It is very exciting. So we've had that, this kind of dripped to us over since we did the live record worship recording back in March. We've had singles come out and finally, this is the one we've been all been waiting for, is the full album with some bonus tracks at the start and is just beautiful. And I was just so f- proud of the people in our community who have done this and it is our heart as a community, it is our voices um, recorded there, worshipping Jesus and these songs were mainly written like during lockdown and during just like quite a hard time. So do, if you've not been online, go on there, it's on Spotify, um, all the usual platforms, share it with your friends, it's very, very exciting. Um, Growing Hope Ball. Woohoo! Yeah, I like I like the whoops. Um, the Gr- Growing Hope is an amazing charity started by Naomi Graham, part of our church family, offering free therapy um, for children and fam- children with additional needs in their family in the community. It is absolutely amazing. Um, come and ask us afterwards more about that. But they have their fundraising ball. We have the fundraising ball um, coming up on Friday, March the tenth, and tickets are now on sale. So particularly if you. You know people who might be, uh, you know, willing to throw the cash around, that <laughs> bring them around. But anyone else, anyone else is also welcome. But um, it, the, the goal is fundraising. And do you know what? Generosity it does, isn't dependent on having the big bucks. So please do come along. It'll be a lot of fun, food, entertainment, dancing, dressing up. Who doesn't love that? Um, so, yeah, head online for that raffle prizes, auction, all the things. Alpha is starting this week. Woohoo! Now, you should all have on your seats a little card. I'm searching in my back pocket. Oh, this is really... Can someone hold up a card? Thank you, Amy. Thank you. You see my struggle and you have answered and Justin tr- also tried to help. Okay, it says, <laughs> stay curious. Um, we want you to not just leave these on your seats... We want you to pick them up, take them home. You might be here and you've never done an Alpha course and you're on a bit of a journey with faith. This is for you. You might be here and you've heard of Alpha for years and you've never invited anyone to it. This is for you. Um, We believe that God is pursuing people to to reveal himself to them. Um, If you are unfamiliar with Alpha, this is a... Eight-week course, I think it is. You get free meal. You get to just bring all your questions about Jesus and faith. There are no silly questions. You can challenge all you want. Um, It is a safe space, and you can just hear about the basics of our faith, what Christianity is all about. Um, And we would love this to be the biggest alpha that we've ever done. Um, So we're going to just take a moment. If you've got one of these in your hand, so just check under your bottom. Um, check if there's a little card there. If not, we can get one afterwards. We're just going to take a moment of quiet to just ask God, should I go to this and or who should I invite to this? So let's just take a moment to do that. So usually it's the first person that comes to your mind. It's not just you, that's God. Might be a neighbour, might be a colleague, you might feel sick at the thought of even telling them that you go to church. (laughs) It's okay. It's for 
this is for them. So, Lord, I just pray for all those people that came to mind. And even if there are people sitting here or at home that should come along to this, that are on a journey, would you give them the courage? Would you give us courage to say yes, to take that step, to come along to this course? And would you do all that you want, Jesus? Would you do all that you want? Would you bring your children home to you? Oh, man. And that, guys, is starting this week on the 1st of Feb. It is not too late to join. And even over the first couple of weeks, it's never too late to join. So do sign up online. Do take home the flyers. Give them out. Um, and for all the details of other things going on in the life of KXC, do head to the website or social media. It's all on there. We are at the point in the service, oh, we're not too bad. I thought we were really behind. We're not too bad. Um, where we give financially as part of our worship. So there is no pressure with this if you're new or visiting. Um, but if you're part of our family, this is, um, yeah, a spiritual principle. It's a way that we worship. And we're going to say some liturgy together to remind ourselves why we give. Then the details will come up on screen for how we can give. Lord, we give joyfully because you have held nothing back from us. Lord, we give generously because we want to become like you. Lord, we give sacrificially because we want others to taste the life of your kingdom. Father, receive these gifts and use them for your glory. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a one-minute break, and we've got the wonderful Lauren Windle with us coming to share in just a moment. So turn to the person next to you, ask them what they had for breakfast, and we'll see you in one minute. Okay, loving hearing all this conversation. I'm going to call you back. Do continue that conversation afterwards in the cafe. I have the huge honour of introducing Lauren Windle, who is going to be with us at all four services today. Um, Lauren is a legend. We only met today, but I have heard of her through many people in our congregation who rave about Lauren. If you don't know who she is, I'll just say a few words. She's a journalist, she's a writer, she's an author, she's a presenter, she's a lover of Jesus, I'm assuming. That's why she's here today. Um, she is um, well known for a book that came out, was it in 2020? Yes. Uh, um, and it is... Awesome book, and this this is but the you one you haven't read. You told me I haven't read, <laughs> uh, but awesome I genuinely book. have had so many conversations with people who rave about the book. I'm I'm real. I'm being real. I'm being no, real. no. Okay, it is called Notes on Love: Being Single and Dating in a Marriage Obsessed Church. Don't you love that title? It looks like this, guys, and um. Pastor Pete Hughes couldn't be here today because he's very unwell. Lazy. Oh, do you pray for him? <laughs> I didn't so sound he, genuine he's at all. He's actually unwell. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. I know you're watching at home. We Such are a all we, <laughs> we are all praying for you. But I'm going to read out what Pete said in endorsing this book. He said, "Notes on Love" is a call to the church to celebrate the opportunities as well as recognize the challenges of singleness, dating, and marriage. I can pretty much guarantee that you will laugh out loud 
a lot. Pause to process some of your own journey and pain. Scribble down notes of incredible wisdom that you want to carry on the journey ahead and regularly put the book down with relief to thank God that fullness of life is found in him and not a perfect or imperfect partner. One of Lauren's conclusions is that being single in the church needs a rebrand. She's absolutely right and this book does just that. I couldn't recommend it more highly. I should have put Pete's voice on, but I don't know how to do that. Um, yeah, it is amazing. It is an area, an issue, and we feel it strongly at KXC. We've got a lot of single dating and married everywhere in between, but um, this is an area that so needs your voice um, and voices like yours speaking in. So do check that out online, buy that. Um, I didn't tell Lauren I was going to do all of that, so that wasn't her telling me to say all that, guys. I'm going to pray for her right now. Why don't we all pray? Lord, would you open our hearts for what you want to speak through Lauren this morning? We thank you for who she is. We thank you for the freedom that she carries. We thank you for her story and for what she's prepared this morning for how you've already been speaking in line with what she's prepared this morning, which is so cool. And we pray that you continue to speak and move in this room and beyond through her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I rarely go to a church that does a session of prophecy, and that was wild. And I think I know how wild it is because I know what's coming next. It's like I've seen the end of the film and I'm sitting here with you guys watching the film, and I'm like, they are going to love the end of this. Because that was completely spot on for everything I've prepared. Like, I just cannot tell you how consistent that is. And I was sitting there like, oh my gosh, get me up there. Not another person. I want to get up there. I'm ready now. I'm ready. Um, so I'm going to read a passage. I've actually put this down from the message, which isn't the version I would usually read from. But when I first came to faith, I really didn't get the sort of formal spiritual language. And the message was really helpful. I'd really recommend that you also look this up in an actual, like, confirmed translation, rather than just an in interpretation, which is still very good and very worthy of attention. But like NIV or whatever you'd usually do. But I'm going to read this from the message. This is Hebrews 10, 22 to 25. So let's do it. Full of belief, confident that we're presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He will... He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging and loving and helping out, not avoiding worshipping together, as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. Okay. So this is predominantly about church, what I'm going to say. But I will say that church isn't faith. Church isn't Christianity. The fundamental thing that we're looking for is a deep personal connection with Jesus. That's the baseline. That's where we start from. But I've been asked to come and chat to you guys about church, and I really believe that moving forward in your faith, learning, growing, and developing that deeper personal connection, taking off in that rocket, do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, church is key for that. So I'm going to talk about church community, about church family, about welcome and how we welcome others and how we feel welcome ourselves. And I've broken that down into three helpful parts because that's what people do when they preach, I've been told. Number one, why I hate church. Number two, why I hate outside church. And number three, why I now love church. Spoiler alert, it gets good at the end. So I was raised Christian. My mum's a Christian. Um, she took me to a couple of churches growing up, a couple of different denominations. I hated it. As the title will tell you, I, I always felt on the outside. I never felt welcome. I never felt a part of. I saw other people, like, in the Sunday schools and stuff like that. Like, my sister, she's just a couple of years older than me. She was in the one Sunday school above me. And the people in her Sunday school are now godparents to her kids. But that was not my story. I, Gandhi, right, said, I like your Christ, I don't like your Christians. That was me. All of my childhood, like, I will put up with this because I think I love this God thing. I'm going to pray. I've got this, you know, my picture Bible, all of that stuff. I was in, but I just didn't feel a part of. I saw pastors leave their wives, members of the congregation. Saw Christian men be violent, 
towards their wives because they weren't being obedient enough. I saw youth leaders run off with children in their groups the moment they turned 16. I was bullied in my Sunday school. I was beaten up at the church youth group on a Friday. My sister had to come and scrape me off the floor at the bus stop and take me home and tell them to leave me alone. Someone from my Sunday school would search my pockets if I saw him at the bus stop. Church was not a safe place for me, okay? I felt like, and even beyond that, right, because that's kids, and, and I grew up in South London. It's rare for me to be north of the river, but here we are. <laughs> I grew up in South London. It was a different time. It was before the gentrification. It was before all of the Australians and the home counties, you know what I mean? It was, we didn't put a Christmas wreath on the door, okay, because that was going to be stolen. It was a different vibe, okay, so there was that, but it was also, I didn't feel particularly loved by church leadership, I felt judged. When I was 13, I was already smoking, I was already drinking, I remember someone telling me like, if I pray for you, God's going to tell me your secrets, he's going to tell me what you're doing, you know, do you want that? And I was like, nah, I'm all right, keep your prayers. Um, so I left, my mum gave me the opportunity, she was like, look, you're 13 now, in or out, that's up to you, you're old enough, you can stay home. Did I go to church anymore? No, of course I didn't, and that was me done with church. And there were times, right, up until 13 to 25, and that's when I'm going to get into the, like, why I hate the world bit in a second, where I would reach out and I'd try and connect again, and I remember I was 19, and by this point, and you'll hear that the smoking and the drinking and the rest was just the start of it, right? I was 19, I walked into a Christian bookshop, because I never would have walked into a church at that point, because by that point, it was too much, I was too judged, it, was, I was, it wasn't my place. I used to make the joke about saying on fire, you know, the one that all your other friends make when you invite them. That was me. So I walked into this Christian bookshop, and I knew I was going wrong, and I said, can I have a book on sin? I was 19, right? And she was like, you're a bit young for a book on sin. <laughs> you have no idea, love. <laughs> um, <laughs> she took me to the kids section. She gave me a book called Who is Jesus, which was a picture book. I bought it because I'm British, polite. <laughs> but I did also buy a book on sin. She was a bit disapproving of that. Went up and paid. And as I left, she said, you know, Christians don't dress like that. I know. <laughs> Do you know what? I actually really like, I d this wasn't part of the talk. I proper want that bookshop. It's closed down now, but there's someone here. I've actually marched around it like Jericho to claim it. So love your prayers for that. Whenever God's give, ready to give me the money for that lease, I will move in and we will make that bookshop what it should have been. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that's what, I thought, that's what I thought church was. That's what I thought faith was, right? It was a building with high walls that I wasn't good enough or strong enough to climb. They were way too high, and I wasn't welcome, and that's all I knew. So I went out into the world, which had its gate wide open. Come on in. It's nice in here. It's warm. We're not going to cuss you. Wear what you like. You know, you can smoke. You can drink. Do what you like. So I, so I drank. I took that invitation really quite seriously. You don't get many people with a Love Island water bottle, do you? <laughs> Mm. don't watch it it's really bad it's really bad um so yeah I started drinking really heavily but I was hiding in plain sight I grew up in South London that's where you know we went to the park we got two for one bottle of white lining from I Iceland and we knocked it back tepid on a park bench and that was fine and it wasn't unusual for someone to throw up and I had this social anxiety so I was desperate to be liked I was desperate to be popular and drinking didn't make me popular, because no one's particularly great when they're battered, but it did mean I didn't have to think about the fact that that was so heavy on me. I was just so conscious of being judged, of, of not being liked, of not being in the right place. Got into a very destructive relationship um, at the age of 19, around the bookshop era, we'll call it. Um, who I was with all through university. He didn't have a faith. And as I say, like, I, if you'd asked me, I probably would have said I was a Christian. Did I pray occasionally when I was drunk? Um, but that was it. I wasn't engaged in any of that. Um, that relationship was codependent. It was violent. It was vi and I say this, I'm not the victim of domestic abuse. I was violent. We were reciprocally violent. There was blood on the pillow. You wake up with blood on the pillows. You don't know why. That's just normal, guys. Spoiler alert, it's not. So I'll come back to that. Um, 
And then he left me on my, I actually, I always say on my 22nd birthday, but I found a diary and it was a week later, so I do feel I should repent of that. <laughs> a week after my 22nd birthday, dropped me back at my mum's house, game over, three-year relationship. The person I thought I was going to be was his wife and the mother of his kids, and we'd have our dogs in Morden or somewhere, and he'd go out and do his decorating, and that was, that was the life I wanted. And then that was stripped away, and I was like, well, okay, well, what am I now? I finished university, this relationship that I put everything into is over. Um, so I went into hospitality, which is an industry where life is very work hard, play hard. Um, you work all hours. Loo days didn't exist then. It was before anyone believed in wellness for employees. So you just worked and worked and worked. And when you were done working, you drank and drank and drank. And then someone introduced me to cocaine, and I was like, hello. Now we've started, you know? Like, this was, this was good, but I've just upgraded. And that catalyzed my destructive lifestyle. And honestly, I'm grateful, because I think if I hadn't been introduced to drugs, I'd still be drinking heavily now, because it's really easy to tell yourself drinking's not a problem. There's always, you know, John, who drinks more than me. Sorry, not actually John. <laughs> I realized John is here, and I have no idea about his drinking patterns. Greg, hopefully there's no Greg in this church, right? That you can always point to someone and be like, they drink more than me, I could, I could hide. It wasn't a problem, right? But cocaine, you can't deny is a problem and not when you're taking it four, four or five times a week, when you're spending a fortune on it, when you start a night in a glamorous like bar or club thinking you're fabulous and you end it licking the table just in case you drop some on your own at like 4 a.m., haying yourself, and then you go to bed and your heart's pounding, and you're like, why have I done this to myself again? I always said I wasn't going to, and you wake up and you're like, this is it, this is the start of the new day, and you maybe even shower, because sometimes, sometimes you have enough about you to wash yourself and put fresh clothes on, but then you do it again anyway, because you just feel completely trapped. I'd walked in easily to access all the things that the world had through that gate, and then the walls just kept growing. And suddenly I was trapped inside a place I did not want to be. And I cannot tell you how desperate that is. And I know that there are people, and I speak to them, and I get it, right, who believe that addiction is a choice, but your choice is taken away from you so quickly. It is taken away from you so quickly. And we have to have empathy for people who are trapped in that place, because it is everything. And I've got friends whose parents have died from addiction. They'll come to me and they'll be like, why didn't they choose me? And that's not the choice they had, I promise you. It's not who do I love most, so that's what I'm going to work for. It's that you cannot see anything around you. You do not know how good life can be because you're in a fog and you can't see what you're fighting for, what you're aiming for. It is all-encompassing. There is no space for anything good. And every time you get a small grip on it, it feels like it's snatched away from you by the drugs and alcohol that are consuming your mind. It is beyond horrific. So I did that for a few years. And eventually, I crashed. And I called my sister, prodigal son, who brought that up, all of you, probably, because that was the, thanks, Justin. Want to watch out for Justin, right? He used to go to my old church, and he tried to poach me twice for his life group. So <laughs> that's a true story. Home group leaders, keep your good ones close, because he's coming for them. <laughs> um, listen, it's really easy when you hear this story to be like, OK, cool, that's not me. You know, I'm not sitting up at stupid o'clock when my alarm goes off to tell me to go to work and I'm still high. I'm not in club toilets, I'm not down egg club. Egg club's around here, right, yeah? Is it? Yeah, King's Cross. It's been a long time since I've been around here, particularly at night, guys, you'll be pleased to hear. That's it, you know, like, it's really easy to hear this story and distance yourself from it. And a lot of people, when I share my testimony, they're like, cool, that's you. You needed God because you were in that place. So I love that you've got that, but this isn't relevant for me, but it is, and I'm asking you to look for the similarities and not the differences. Because actually, every single person will know what it's like to make a decision that they knew they didn't want to make, you know? To, to reach for that packet of biscuits that they binge ate and been like, no, I told myself, it's just one biscuit and then I'm stopping, right? It's just one glass of wine. It's just one show on that website which you know you don't really want to be looking at, you know? We, we, 
all understand what that's like, but hopefully the vast majority of us won't have been completely consumed by it. But idolatry is a spectrum and it's in all of us. You know, and yes, right down here at the bottom, this is where those things, those dopamine releasing things are in their rightful place. And Jesus is on the throne and that money, that sex, that power, that porn, that food, that alcohol, that substance, that shopping, that phone, that gaming, that gambling is in its right place, either in moderation or abstinence, depending on, on what that thing is. And then all the way up here, there's me with alcohol and um, drugs and everyone else can plot themselves on that line with all of these things. And ideally, we all want to be down here, but we know we're not always. And we know we can take a little step up, and we need to keep that in check. So it's about being accountable. It's about being open. And it's about knowing that no one, really no one, is above these things getting out of control. So sister's the one who stayed and got no credit for it, right? I'm the one who came bowling back, like, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm broken, someone fix me, please. And I called my sister and I told her, like, I know what I'm doing anymore. You know, I, I, I just can't, I can't stop taking cocaine. I don't want to be this person. I'm not spending time with you or the family. I'm distancing myself from friends and family who, who really care about me in favor of people who don't care about me. They just want to take drugs with me. You know, like, I don't know what to do. And that was on a Friday. Saturday, she moved me out of my flat and moved me with her. Sunday, she took me to church. And they did that thing where they're like, if you want prayer, stand up. Um, and it was like you literally had to stand up where you, were, where you were. And she had her hand like that. And she was just going like, oh, my goodness, Lord, please just make her stand up. And I was like, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, it's nice. They're nice people. But this isn't, this isn't me. I'm sorry. So I moved away. Um, and things kind of got better. Um, I moved to a country where I couldn't speak the language. So getting drugs was harder. But... <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way, people. And after about nine months, I started getting access to drugs again. I had a drug dealer. Um, and that's when my friends who were out there sat me down and were like, you've gone too far now, look. You know, you've moved country to stop this. We need you to do something about this. They're not Christian. They're just lovely. Um, and they looked up a support group meeting, and they sent me there. And I went because I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. This will shut them up for a bit. And I just cried. I just cried the whole time, and I saw something there that I had never seen before, and I thought it was just me, and I thought no one else knew the desperation and the pain of that moment, and then to hear people speak about it, and for them to have found freedom, I was like, this is magic. This is what I want. I've got to do whatever I can to fight for this, and they told me, if you want to stop taking drugs, you've got to stop drinking, and I was like, not ready for that, and I called my sister, and I was like, they said to stop drinking. And she was like, do it. She, didn't, she did not skip a beat. She said, do it. I think this will be the best thing you've ever done in your life. And I never drank again. And that was the 22nd of April, 2014. Thanks, guys. Mm. I agreed to go to 90 meetings in 90 days, which is what they ask, often people will ask you to do when you go into recovery. You spent your whole life um, investing in your addictive behavior, so why not spend that time investing in yourself and your recovery, right? So I did, and on the third meeting, someone talked about their higher power. Now, in these meetings, it's as inclusive as possible, but it is spiritual, but it's a higher power, or God as you understand him. And this guy, who didn't believe in the sort of Christian God, in, in what we believe, what I believe, was just like, yeah, you've got to work it out. Like, mine's the trees or something like that. Like, you know, something. But you've got to work out what yours is. So I Googled church, and I went to the first one. Never let it be said that bad SEO isn't, that good SEO isn't worth investing in. Because I rocked up at the first church that came up on Google, right? And they did their preach. I don't remember what it was on. And then the vicar was like, do you want to come up for prayer? It's an American church, and I always do the accent, but actually I think that's a bit rude, so I'm not going to. <laughs> Maybe I should. Um, so I went up, went up for prayer, and he was like, yeah, sure, what can I pray, pray for you for? And I was like, I am five days clean and sober from a cocaine addiction. He was like, okay, um, if you just sit, sit here. And then he pulled around this amazing couple. Could you mind if I put my hands on your shoulder, talk me through this prayer, whatever you need. I don't, oh gosh, this is all a bit weird, isn't it? And then they invited me to a women's Bible study that was run by his wife, and she hadn't been there. So I turn up at this Bible study. She was like, Lauren, I just love you. My husband's told me about you. I was like, she's touching me. <laughs> she, she loves me. 
and this is mental, I'm in one of those Louis Theroux Christian cults. That's, that's what I thought. Um, but she sat down and there was like maybe 10 people in the room. She was like, let's just start by doing, this is for you. This is by request. Let's just start, right, by going around and saying, I don't know why she's a valley girl, she's from Minnesota. <laughs> Um, let's just start by going around the circle and tell me why you're here, like what it is about Christians that you just love, you know? <laughs> oh, what have you seen? And people were like, oh, it's just this generosity, it's just this kindness, it's just this patience. I could feel it, this fire inside me. And I was like, I, shouldn't, I swear too much to be here, you know, this isn't right. And then she got to me and I was like, nothing. I've not seen anything I like in Christians. I'm here despite how Christians have treated me. And I ran through some of that stuff that I said to you earlier, and I looked up at her, and tears were flooding down her face. And she, I truly think that this changed my life. There are many moments that changed my life, but this is really big. And she just said, I'm sorry. So I know that wasn't me. I know that wasn't that person I didn't grow up with you, and I wasn't in your church, right? But I'm so sorry that we, that Christians, showed you that and treated you like that and we didn't protect you, that we didn't show you what this can be, what God can be in church. And I, I am asking you to just give us another chance. Like, let us, show you, let us show you what this is really about. Let us show you what we believe Jesus did for us and then, and then we can bring you into that. And I just felt this rock lift off my shoulders. And I was like, I just needed it. I just needed freedom from that, that resentment I didn't even realize I was carrying. They were so gentle with me, you know? They never made assumptions about me. They always put relationship before challenge and correction, you know? They didn't bowl over like, you're Christian now, you've got to be perfect, you're doing this. I smoked for a year. I, baptism, baptized a year and a half later, still puffing away on cigarettes, right? And I know that wasn't... That, like, okay, we don't want people to smoke. It's not good for your body. We want everyone to be as healthy and as fulfilled and the best chance of a good life as possible, right? And smoking is not great for you, but I needed it. I'd given up. Drugs and alcohol, they were my, like, physical, chemical crutches. And God was like, let have it. Let have it for a bit. It's cool, you know? We can't expect people to be in our churches and to be Christ. We've got to see people where they are and discern what they need and how we can best support them. And nine times out of 10, if you some, see someone doing something unchristian, it's not your place. It's just not. Have you been invited? Have they given you space to speak into their life like that? Are you holding them accountable or are you just putting that wall higher up around the church for them and making them feel like they can't climb in? So why do I love the church now? <laughs> that changed my life. Those people changed my life. They were incredible to me. They gave me my first Bible. They taught me through stuff. They taught me through reading the Bible from Matthew, not from Genesis. Excellent tip. Why do not more people tell you that? <laughs> Genesis, start off. Not going to get you anywhere. You want the Gospels. Um, since then, I've been baptized. I've found community support. The most incredible, deep, and loving friendships. I've found human love like I never knew it. Um, I've seen church offer support to homeless. I know that you guys had a brunch downstairs, so this might still be running. Seen those in debt, 80% of the church, of debt recovery and debt support is run by the church for free. Um, and recovery courses, and I've been involved in recovery courses for the last seven years, um, supporting people in addiction in a church setting, putting Jesus back into that sort of 12-step model rather than just higher power as you understand it. If you are interested in what recovery looks like in terms of like practically, I'm not going to go into that and that's a big long thing, but I have done a TED talk on it which you guys can Google and that will talk you through day to day what I did that put me on that track and I'd encourage you to do that if that's something you're interested in. Um, most of all though, the church showed me Jesus that was it. It wasn't that I sat in my room and I read the Bible and I had this conversion moment. It was slow and gradual. There was no lightning bolt in my story. It was people just consistently showing up for someone who didn't believe they were good enough to be shown up for. And that's what they showed me. And that's what we can do. Um, we have something here that has the ability to transform people's lives in the most radical, wonderful, and unexpected ways. Do not build walls around it. Open the gate. Let people in. Okay, so here's what we're going to do about it. Firstly, if you 
have been treated badly by the church. If you've been around that kind of abuse, and I know like mega pastors and mega churches in the States, this is all coming to a head and power corrupts and accountability is important. And I love that, that I believe this church has that accountability so that this won't be your story. And the same for mine down in South London and, and lots of others. But we do need to be mindful. We do need to watch out and make sure that our churches and our leaders are prayed for and that we are on track. Um, but if you are in a place where you have that resentment, when you've been hurt by the church, where you feel like you fine with Christ but not Christians, I'm, I want to offer you what someone offered me and say, I am so sorry. I swear we can do better and we will do better. But don't give up. Don't give up on Jesus because of people. You know, I really believe that this church can do this better for you. And I know this isn't my church, but I love this church. I was like online during lockdown and had some incredible moments with this church in lockdown. You guys have got something really special. And I'm so sorry if you haven't been treated in that way. But I want to invite you to explore that one more time. Give us one more chance to show you how this could be done. Next, if you relate to any elements of my story of addiction... And that might just be like, oh, you feel a bit challenged about your phone use, you know? Like, we're not, it, I, it doesn't have to be as extreme as we're going. Nip it in the bud before it gets to you. Nip it, take it when it's just a niggle, okay? Because you don't want to be where I was. You really, really don't want to be where I was. It's so hard to come back from that. But if you are there, you can come back from that. And you've never gone too far. And you always have grace, and there's always a path back. You are not too old or too young. You've not done too many bad things. You've never taken too many drugs or drunk too much or spent too much or pushed too many people away to come back and find that freedom because Jesus died for you to have it, to have life to its fullest. So step into it and claim it. Um, next, if you are somebody who's toying with this idea of church. When you come to a church, do you see walls or do you see gates? I think you've got to ask yourself that. And if it's walls, like, come and get some prayer. Come and chat to these guys. Ask them where the gates are open. They'll walk you through. You know, that's cool. They, they'll show you where it is. There's no walls here. You are, you are welcome. Um, and what about for you guys who are in the church? When you see someone new who's joining, that person that maybe you wouldn't want to sit next to on the bus, the person who like, you wouldn't naturally socialize with, or that kind of thing, what, do you open the gate or have you put up walls? Like, could you do better? Have you maybe been a bit judgy? Have you been a bit too quick to challenge someone when it's not your place? I think we all need to ask ourselves those questions regularly. Um, some of you guys may have been searching for something in the world that satisfies you. Let us in the church show you what we found to fulfill that. Let us show you the welcome that you deserve. Let us show you the welcome that changed my whole life. You know, we are all one in Christ. We are all equal in Christ. Everyone is equally welcome in this family. And if you ever have that problem, I swear DM me and I'll have a word. <laughs> That's real. I'll call that church leader and explain what's going on in their church. Um, God doesn't shame. Who said about shame? God doesn't shame. God convicts and gives us a chance to change and gives us a welcome into his family. So I just really love to invite you into that. I'm done, and I recognize I've gone over a little bit, but there is a few um, people who I'd really like to invite to come up for prayer. It's always really important when you talk about addiction to give people the space to have prayer over. If there is something that is, is becoming an idol, is an addiction, is, you know, just taking up too much of their headspace, we'd love to pray for you. Um, if you've been hurt by the church, we would love to pray for you. Come up. Come up and just say, like, you know, it, it's, this is going to be a difficult journey, but we're here. We're going to walk it together. If you feel like you could do more to be more welcoming then we'd love to pray for you as well. And if you are like, okay, I think this would be cool, you know? Like, all right, um, I'll, I'll give this another week, whatever. We want to pray for you too. So that's basically all of you. I don't know if you want to <laughs> just walk up to the front if we do it in batches, like at a wedding when you call people to the buffet. Um, no. Obviously, we want people to be praying in their seats and stuff like that. But there's, there's plenty of team um, here, and I'll hand over for logistics. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Why don't we stand to our feet? Um, is Amy Dolly around? 
Ah, oh, right there. Ames, do you mind just playing just a bit of background music? That's not magic, but it just helps us to be in kind of a... Music actually is really powerful. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pray for us. The Lord is speaking. Lord Jesus, thank you that you're in the room. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Lauren's story. Thank you for the words that were just spoken. And I just feel like there are those in the room and even watching at home that it's like, I've been waiting for someone to say that, to acknowledge that, to acknowledge my pain and my story. Um, and, and I just echo that um, even from KXC, where we've hurt you, we are sorry. Mm. Um, and Lord, would you release your grace here this morning? And there are those who are battling with addiction, different kinds of addiction, battling with shame that is um, causing that addiction to allow to grow in the dark. Um, those that just don't feel like they belong. Lord, have mercy. Lord, come pour out your spirit now. Would you eject fear and shame from this room? Jesus, come, come. He is here to set free. He is here to heal. He is here to begin something in us. He is here to give us His heart as a church. Even where we've got ideas of church and it's religious, um, where it's not nothing to do with you, Jesus, we just surrender our idea of Christianity, of church. Lord, where there are barriers that we have caused. Would you reveal those? Come, Jesus. Let's just have a moment of just receiving. The Lord's already speaking. If you're ready to open up to Him, why don't you just hold your hands out like this as a posture of saying, even where it hurts, God, I'm, I'm here. I'm trusting, taking this step of trust. That you are able, that church is your good idea. You're going to do good things here. your presence, would you move in this room? Would you speak? Now we are going to just invite those that just know that there, there was some words spoken through this message and through the prophetic words earlier, or if you just came with a real need for prayer this morning for whatever, we would love to invite you. No, there's not huge amounts of space, but there's in the middle and there's to either side at the front. And I'm going to invite like our core team and then others um, who are part of Hubs to come and just pray. So why don't you come forward now? If any of those words from today landed or you just want prayer for anything, well done. Come on forward. And um, as you come forward, just know that the Lord is here. He's beginning this in you. So just hold out your hands. Just say, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Just come on forward. Come right to the front, to the sides. Thank you, Lord, for these people that have come forward, Lord, you know, you see and you know, let this be a day, Jesus, that you bring your 